Hotel guests do have high expectations. They don't look at an Eggs Benedict at $27 odd dollars or $26. Dollars. They look at it at $300 because that's what they're paying for a room. And, and that's their expectation is, is so much higher. We wrote the narrative. We, we told Sam how you, should try and, how you should do things, how the team should be set up. No one wants a 60 hour week, no thank you. So this is like a gluten-free chocolate raspberry sponge, a raspberry chocolate mousse, and a dark chocolate coating with freeze dry raspberry. I'm gonna pipe uh, milk chocolate chantilly uh, on top and some just decoration, fresh flowers. I've always got in the back of my mind, like, I want to give service that I would want to receive if I was to go somewhere. You know, tomorrow's another day. Um, you're going to have ups and downs every day. You've just, just got to keep doing what you do. And if you do the fundamentals right, the outcome will be good. Um, so now I'm making but the routine is like muffin and scone in the morning, first thing in the morning. So this is like ginger, lemon and blueberry muffins. Cool. So now I'm doing the scones. And after that I'm free to do my cakes. <laughs> um, so uh, five to five days a week, we've got a really in here. He'll turn up at uh, between 5.30, 5.45. He rocks on in, cracks the kitchen open, turns the lights on, and he gets himself started on the daily baking of fresh goods, so scones and muffins and bits and pieces like that, sets himself up. How early did you have to start when you were in France? Uh, about 2 a.m., 3 a.m., yeah. So tell us why you grate your butter. Uh, I actually, I'm not sure why. <laughs> like this, I've learned this from like uh, my first work here in New Zealand, like eight years ago. There was this like old Kiwi lady who just like was grating the butter. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm doing the scones. So I got the same recipe as what she was doing with me. And yeah, I'm just this is not my culture. So I'm just. We're producing it. <laughs> About 15 minutes after that, old uh, Jesse turns up and he does the next stage of setup, which he cranks on all the grill, turns everything on, gets everything hot, and then about five, 10 minutes after that, I turn up. Yeah, man, how are you? How are you, man? How are you? I'm good. And I'll jump in there, start cutting some bread for the day. Just loading up the sections, pretty much, is what we have to do, because you're better off to load yourself up than trying to chase your, chase your tail the whole day. Man, you ripped through the bread, aren't you? We're getting paid to wake up, which is kind of nice. Uh, so the first hour or so, sort of mumbling, catching up on how the day was the day before and what everyone had for dinner and shit like that. But muscle memory, we just sort of know that if the section doesn't look full, then we've missed something. Someone will do the hollandaise, someone will smash the avo, comes together, and then when service is on, everyone knows where their sections are from that point for sure. It was at Hello Sunday, Samson bought one. And we're making purees and bits and pieces at the time or whatever, and they were, they were fine. As soon as you use one of these though, the consistency that you can pull out of them and, and the power and what have you, amazing. They don't do massive volume, that's probably the only problem they have in a commercial kitchen, but you just cannot get food as smooth and silky with anything else. So just to start, if you can tell us your name and if you could spell out, spell out your name for us, that would be great. My full name? Yes, please. Emma Marianne May Carney. Do I have to spell the whole thing? E-M-M-A, C-A-R-N-E-Y. M-A-R-Y-A-N-N-M-A-Y-C-A-R-N-E-Y -N -N -E <laughs> I had to think about that for a second I was like, am I spelling this right? <laughs> On a Saturday, so Saturday today, I get here about, you know, 6.15 Usually go say, hello chefs We always say hello in the morning How you doing? Have a wee catch up I'll start turning on the machine Get all the water jugs put out and things like that Take the open sign out Ooh, chilly morning and by then it's about seven o'clock and should be ready to go. We get a huge mixture of walk-ins and bookings. So usually first thing in the morning is hotel guests and then the public will start to trickle in a bit later. You never know what the day's gonna bring. <laughs> oh, that must be Harry. <laughs> He's probably so nervous. Oh, hello Harry, nice hair. <laughs> um, I'm just making Aurelian's coffee. So he just has a, he just has a latte 
full cream milk and the other two have uh, oat flat whites. Uh, lucky enough to meet Harry at um, the caffeine lab. Something went wrong with my car one day and I was just bitching him moaning about it at work and he's like, oh, it used to be a heavy diesel mechanic, I had no idea. He was around the next day in the rain on his day off fixing it for me, saving me hundreds of dollars. He's just a genuine nice guy and, and his coffee skill level is so high and I really want to see him sort of be recognised for that throughout Christchurch because he's, he's new to Christchurch, he's Australian, but he, he deserves some, some recognition man, he's amazing. Harry and I have a thing where we have to feed each other water, otherwise we don't stay hydrated. Yeah. There you go, Harry, that's for you. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Take hey, one soon, please. Hotel guests do have high expectations. They don't look at an Eggs Benedict at $27 or $26. They look at it at $300, because that's what they're paying for a room. And, and that's their expectation, is, is so much higher. The Bacon Benny. First hash in the deep fryer. Two slices of bacon, two eggs in the egg pot. I'd prefer people to wait maybe like an extra 10 minutes to have fresh eggs and better quality stuff. Look at that there, season it. The Benedict is, is a staple for this place as well. I don't think that will change. I spoke about not being a recipe guy and that's because I've done that uh, so many times. Uh, th tons of potatoes we've gone through. And that just hits all the right notes as well, you know, like Jesse cooks the perfect eggs. We make a lovely hollandaise with a bit of zest in there so it's a bit brighter. And even though that's a relatively heavy dish because of the zest and the size, uh, people leave feeling fulfilled but not buggered. Our food offering here is really playing with the classics. Nick will talk about it in a lot more depth than me, but... What we try to do with the classics, like the French toast, is, is flip it as much as you can. French toast time. Burnt butter mascarpone. I don't think anyone else is doing that. It came as a mistake. Completely split. So how do we work around this? So we found a secret ingredient that seems to form it together perfectly. Um, yeah, welcome to share that with all of you at some stage, but not right now. Lots of nice fresh fruits and bits and pieces. That? Textures. That's a tamarillo. So we've got some nice early summer strawberries. Simple shit, like at home no one thinks to cut a blueberry in half. We'll cut them in half. And people think, wow, I've never seen the inside of a blueberry. Not even blue. Sprinkle a few through there, a few whole ones. Lovely, lovely. And we stack her up. Turkish apricot syrup, pistachios, and a little bit of this um, fruit gel here, which I think we've got a Black Doris plum gel. When was it? Might have been 2021. End of there or early 2022, I um, slid right into Nick Tatum's DMs on Instagram. Random Wednesday, I think it was, and um, said, am I interested in coming and having a chat about working in a new hotel, new concept that they're talking about? Uh, I said, love your stuff, I'd love a chat. And he's like, look, I'm not interested in hotels, mate. And I uh, initially thought, yeah, absolutely not. Um, and straight away, Sam was quite down to earth. Asked me what I wanted to do with the place, so straight away I quite liked that he sort of um, was already trusting, straight away. We wanna, we wanna do things a bit different and yeah, the rest is history. We wrote the narrative. We, we told Sam how you, should try and, how you should do things, how the team should be set up. No one wants a 60 hour week, no thank you. Oh, he brings so much more than food. He brings culture, he brings a, a family vibe to the business. Another like fried chicken for breakfast. Obviously we're family owned business and he's like the father figure in the food and beverage really. <laughs> so he, he brings a real calming atmosphere. He brings creativity and, and love to the job. The other dish that we did was the, the bircher. Uh, we make this the day before generally. Soak them overnight with oats, chia seeds, um, tangelo rind, nectarine, juice and bits and pieces like that. Coconut yogurt foam for textural re reasons. A bit of dragon fruit's gonna sit right in the top there. Make it nice and exotic. Pretty. Some pomegranates on there I reckon. Everyone works the right amount of hours. I think we put all those things into place, looked after the staff, we handpicked our staff. That felt really nice. That was probably my favourite bit that was refreshing and kind of put us at ease really early on. I reckon we'll leave it there. And that is the bircher. Lovely. Yeah. How was it this morning, Aurelian? Not very really good, actually. I'm more relaxed than I thought I would be. <laughs> I thought you'd be tense. <laughs> I thought so too, yeah. but Harry made me relax more. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the chocolate glaze, so it's a mix of uh, calbo chocolate and grapeseed oil. So this is like a gluten-free chocolate raspberry sponge, a raspberry chocolate mousse, 
and a dark chocolate coating with freeze dry raspberry. I'm gonna pipe uh, milk chocolate chantilly uh, on top and some just decoration, fresh flour. So it's a shoe pastry. Uh, inside is uh, caramel and vanilla custard. I pipe a uh, milk chocolate chantilly on top and I add some chocolate garnish to make the swan shape. Doing different than everyone does in Christchurch, you know, make something nobody does. We don't do like the little club sandwich for the high tea, like we do uh, mini burgers and we try to elevate a bit the standing of it. I used to not like doing little things. <laughs> I came here because I I want to do things I'm not used to do before, like working in a hotel, like do the things I'm not comfortable with. We were thinking about that the other day. Is there such thing as a low tea? I don't think so. I really am, um designed our high tea and uh, from the ground up. I mean, he's got a very small space to work and we'd love to have more space, but we've got to work with what we've got here. Um, and he's different to the other chefs. Often in a, in a kitchen you say, where's the recipe book? And the chefs will laugh, but for him, everything's written out. Everything is weighed. He, he does everything to precision. Now I'm plating the spiced apple tatin cake, and I'm gonna finish by the lemon and the most fragile one, the swan at the end. Hello everyone. I believe we've got a birthday on the table. Oh. So this is your birthday cake. Oh, thank you. With the tea light candle there. Oh, so we can great. sing if you want. Happy birthday dear Margot. Happy birthday to you. So Emma um, applied the traditional way, we, we had an ad up and um, she previously worked at Le Bakerman and um, she'd been off for hospitality, I think, I think it was for about a year and um, she wanted to get back in on it and um, she first joined us as a senior barista um, as part of the team and she really, really grew up the ranks really quick. We get told a lot that, oh this is so fancy and I'm like, you know, it's fancy on the inside, it looks really good but like... Anyone's welcome here. What is it? Does it say scrambled on gluten free? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm the cafe manager at Majestic at Mayfair. Have been since the end of last year. She d demands respect and she gets respect. I've always got in the back of my mind like I want to give service that I would want to receive if I was to go somewhere. For future people coming into hospo, I just want them to realise that you, you can get a really good career out of this. We're just getting ready for service tonight. Um, transitioned obviously from busy cafe trade, now we're just getting ready for night service. On a Friday night generally there'll be a few drinkers and a few snacks, so that's sort of Zach's time to shine. So Zach's, um, he's a young fella. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's the face of the evenings really. He's um, bright, bubbly, all the regulars know him. He's been with us since day one. For the next one that I'll be making, Kabati Crush. The idea of it is sort of like something sweet, um, a little bit of a spice to it, but also to take off all the sweetness, we have a coconut foam on top. It's a salted coconut foam and it just sits nicely on top. And as you can see, the foam starts breaking up really quickly. And then you just, oh, wrong one, almost. Almost just burned the whole thing, but that's all right. Um, he didn't start as bar manager. He worked his way up and, and yeah, he's, he's creative, but, and, I, and I'm obviously working with him to develop him into a better manager and he's growing every day. The platter, the platter's good for, for example, a, a group of four that are coming in just for something to graze at while they're um, have, having a couple of wines because they've got a good wine range here and Zach does a good job out there so instead of coming for a whole meal we're happily to share that, chip away for an hour or what have you. Again using nice produce on there from Salotti so and uh, imported Italian ingredients and things like that and you know you eat that at your leisure, everything's cold on there so you can't complain that it's gone cold so happy days. The bruschetta became a staple for this place and probably will never go off the menu just because it took such a good photo early on and, and it sort of nods to nice ingredients nice clean and simple food. Using nice ingredients from um, Salotti in particular, providing nice buffalo mozzarella and using nice fresh produce with the cherry tomatoes etc uh, on lovely grizzly bread. Uh, that's the bruschetta, we sell a lot of that. I think uh, I might have mentioned it before but we always make a joke like is your wife all good bro? You're here all the time. <laughs> After he drops his son off at preschool 8am till 5pm, 5 5 goes home for about half an hour, smashes that dinner and he'll come back 
and then he's here till 9, 10 o'clock at night and then go home. And he's been doing that from day dot. What's the biggest sacrifice that you have made to make this place work? <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> um, probably time away from the family. Um, I work pretty hard, pretty long, because I know hard work pays off. You know, tomorrow's another day. Um, you're gonna have ups and downs every day. You've, you've just, just gotta keep doing what you do. And if you do the fundamentals right, the outcome will be good. All I'd say is work hard. Work harder than the other person around you. Um, make that guest's experience better than the previous property they've been to. Nothing's better when you're walking down the street or even I'm walking in the cafe and clothes like this. People don't know I, I work here. Um, there's people saying good comments about the place. It's really, really good to hear. I really hope hospitality keeps growing in Christchurch over the next five years. Um, it has been growing and rebuilding since the quakes, but I just want it to keep growing. I want people coming back to the city and venues to keep opening.